Hello YouTube, Deadstick again here with a second video showing you how to correctly configure the Thermal Scout variometer for use with the FrySky telemetry receiver and also how to correctly set up the FrySky FLD-02 LCD display with audio and visual data. What you see in front of you here is the basic setup startup screen that you're going to see when you power up your transmitter. In my case I'm using a Futaba 9C with the 2.4 gigahertz two-way telemetry module and the FLD02 uh, mounted as you see it. Here you're going to see that we have uh, the data and menu options. The first thing we're going to do is go into the menu because there's a very simple uh, data setup that we've got to go through. I'm just going to press once and here we are. Now what we want to take a look at is this line right here that says alarm set A1-1. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit for you. There it is, alarm set A1-1. Now you may remember from the earlier video that our analog data port that we're using is A2-1. So I'm going to press once, twice, and now we're at A2-1. What we've got to do now is concern ourselves with these three pieces of information. The first little box here, and I'm going to highlight it by scrolling once to the right, you should be able to see a small number 2. This represents my choice for which audio alert I want to hear. And I can press down and go from 2 to 3, then to 0, which is off, no audio alert, then 1, 2, 3, 0, back to 1, back to 2. So I've selected number 2, which is a constant fast beep beep, 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 if you will. The next value I have to set here is greater than or less than. If I scroll over, you should just be able to see a small arrow pointing to the right for the mathematical symbol for greater than. If I press down, you'll see that the symbol moves to the left, less than. I push again, and as you would expect, it goes back to the right, greater than. And we're going to select greater than because when we set up the thermal scout in the earlier video, we told the thermal scout to present uh, an increase in voltage when it indicated lift. The greater the amount of lift or the faster the rate of climb, the higher the voltage. So what we're doing here is saying I want to hear audio alert number two when a certain value greater than this number right here. Let's scroll over to that. Okay, here you can see the number 117. And this is the area where most people have lots of heartburn and confusion setting up the FLD-02, and it's certainly where I got into lots of trouble. And I have uh, nothing but uh, thanks for the very smart folks over at the telemetry forum on RC Groups for helping me out and helping me understand this. This number 117 represents a specific number of ADC units. And an ADC unit turns out to be 12.9 millivolts. So how do we get from 12.9 millivolts ADC units, whatever, 117, where the heck does all this come from? So, <coughs> what you're going to see in a minute is that when we turn on our thermal scout, the resting voltage when the variometer is on but at rest and not indicating lift is 1.5 volts. If you take 1.5 volts and divide by 12.9 millivolts, you're going to get 116.27. Trust me on this, that's exactly the number you're going to get with your calculator. Now your resting voltage is either going to be 1.5, 1.6, or 1.7. It varies a little bit from variometer to variometer, but that's the value that you're going to get, one of those three most likely. Do the calculation, divide by 12.9, drop the decimal point, makes it really simple, and you're going to get a value of, in this case, 116, let's say. So I round it up, since we, all, we have to use whole numbers here, to 117 as my threshold. Now you want to play with this value and get it as close to the ragged edge of the Thermal Scout's neutral zone as you possibly can. Okay, and it's very easy to change. You see it highlighted, I'm going to press down, and you'll see that the number 7 is highlighted. If I move the rocker switch once to the right, that's 118. Once back is 117. Once back the other way is 116. Once back to the right is 117. So very easy to change. Press down, there's our highlighted value. Once you select that, and it's a little process of trial and error when you bench fly the setup, play with it a little bit, uh, you're never going to get 
the variometer in a state where uh, if you set the value low enough, then um, it's never going to go off. So play with it um, plus or minus about, about two numbers um, up or down from what the calculation gives you. In other words, if I, my calculation told me 116 was my resting value for ADC units, I wouldn't expect that I'm going to be setting this more than about 118 on the high side or 115, let's say, on the low side. But just play with it. It's easy to change as I've shown you, and you just want to get a comfortable neutral range. When you've got that, click over to OK, press down. You see the checkbox, everything is saved. Then we click 1, 2, 3, for five times, and you see the word back illuminated right here. I press down again, and I am back, literally, to my startup screen. Um, we've just been in the menu configuration. Now we want to go to the data screen. This is where you're going to get your actual data. So I just press down again. Okay, here we are. The 5.2 number right here represents the voltage that the receiver is seeing from our flight pack or your ESC, whatever the case may be. 5.2, pretty good voltage. The 1.4 represents the off voltage at the thermal scout. So the, the variometer is not active right now. I'm gonna, you'll hear a switch go off in a second. I'm going to turn it on. There you go. And you'll see the voltage jumps, jumps up to 1.5, which is that nominal resting voltage. Now you just heard those two beeps. The variometer, as I said, is very sensitive. Um, I'm still in a real good spot. That's a real good value for me. It's, it might beep a little bit, but you want to be real close to that, that sort of ragged edge on the, in your neutral spot so that you get good indication in um, light lift. Now, don't be concerned and think, well, that's going to be beeping all the time. How the heck am I going to know if I'm in lift or not? Because when the glider is actually flying in cruise mode, unless it's in lift, it's always descending. A glider is always descending and only climbs when the rising air mass that surrounds it, and when that uh, rate, uh, the rate of which that air mass is rising, is greater than the sink rate of the glider. So when you're in cruise mode, what the variometer is going to sense is that the glider is descending, and you're not going to trigger the variometer giving you any false indications of lift. And if you feel it's a little bit twitchy, whenever you have what are called stick thermals, uh, you're pulling back on the stick a little bit, and you're getting some false readings from the vario. When you land, take the Take the uh, uh, variometer out, go through the setup I just showed you. I'm sorry, you don't have to do that, do it from the transmitter, and move it down one notch. Okay, and you'll be all set. Very, very simple. And that's all there is to it. Um, you now have your, your uh, variometer off. Again, now it's on. When the variometer indicates lift, this number is going to go up. The audio tone is going to sound. And you know you're in lift, and you can begin to circle or work the lift if it's ridge lift, whatever it is that you're um, uh, you're doing to try and sustain your flight. Um, so I hope this video has been helpful. Again, I want to acknowledge all the help and support I got from the uh, Fry Sky Telemetry Forum over on RC Groups because I was really stuck on this. These are great products, but the documentation is very, very uh, uh, limited in terms of walking you through, through some of the things that I had to go through to learn how to do this. So I hope this has been very helpful for you. Thanks for watching and safe flying.